Right. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Premier Football Chat. Today we're going to do a review of the two games that took place yesterday between the Netherlands and the USA and also the game between Argentina and Australia. And we'll also do a little preview on the game between England and Senegal, which will take place today. So yeah, let's start off with the Netherlands USA. I thought this was a good game. Like coming into this game, the Netherlands had been given a lot of criticism from the me their media back home for being a bit boring, a bit bland. And one thing I like about Louis van Gaal is he takes on the media and he seems confident in his team. He said to, when he was asked by one of the journalists, he said, "I'll see you in the see you in the final." So yeah, this game was a good game. I thought USA gave it a good go. But yeah, Netherlands definitely deserve to go through. And yeah, the, the player of the match, Dumfries, was outstanding throughout the game. And for the first goal, it was a lovely, lovely passing move in midfield. It was like old school Netherlands. And then it ball came out wide to Dumfries. And he cut it back to Memphis Depay, who swept off swept her. Made a beautiful moves to make it 1-0. So yeah, that was a good goal. And then just on the stroke of our time, Dale Blaine scored a crucial goal to make it 2-0, so that changed the team talk and sort of set, took the game away from the USA, who had chances throughout the game in the first half. I thought Pulisic should have scored early on for them to make it 1-0. But yeah, they played well with the USA. They managed to get back into the game briefly in the second half through a shot which took a wicked deflection and went in. But then they conceded late on, which effectively just killed the game. And yeah, the ball came out to Dumfries, who was unmarked in the box. Robinson, sh the USA fullback, should have got out to him, but he didn't see him. He didn't look over his shoulder. He was caught ball watching. And then Dumfries, who was outstanding all game, swept home and got his deserved goal to make it 3-1 free, free to the Netherlands. And yeah, they made it through to the quarterfinals. And then the game in the evening between Argentina and Australia. I thought Argentina, who obviously were the favourites, didn't really take the game to Australia early on. I thought it was quite even. Australia played quite well. They've had a really good tournament. And yeah, the, what happened was the Argentina weren't really closing the ball down. Then all of a sudden, Messi, who has been, who's been incredible, playing his 1,000th game. Yeah, so he managed to close the ball down and just set the turn for Argentina. And, and then they had a free kick and then the ball broke out back to Messi. And then he curled, all, curled home a nice left foot goal out of nothing. So, yeah, it was quite even up until that point. But then, yeah, Argentina just took over. And, yeah, in the second half, they played really well. Uh, Alvarez, who's also been at, he plays for Man City, so he's been a good signing for them. And he managed to press Matt Ryan, the, the Australian goalkeeper, forced him into a mistake. And then, yes, yeah, managed to score an easy goal. But you have to give credit to Alvarez for pressing and he's been really good since he's come into the team for Lataro Martinez. And yeah, let's just get on to Lataro Martinez because boy, boy, he's finishing. Wow. It has been pretty dreadful, to be honest. Like, I mean, he, had a, he, had a, he scored against Saudi Arabia, but he was offside and lost his place in the team in the first game. In the second game, he should have scored against Poland, but shot wide, miles wide. He was he should have scored that. And then in this game, Messi set him up a couple of times. And one of them, like, Messi went on an amazing run, drew in about four Australian defenders, played in Lataro Martinez, who was free on his own, and then managed to blaze over. It's like, you've got to be scoring these chances because although it didn't matter in the end, Argentina got through, but... They've, they, and they're facing Netherlands in the quarterfinals, but you've got to be coming on and taking these chances because they might need you later on in the tournament. And I'm just sort of getting Higuain 2014 World Cup where they got to the final against Germany and he had a chance to score and he missed. And also in the Copper America final, he had a chance to score and he missed. And yeah, it's a big, big tournament, man, for Argentina. Their fans were outstanding throughout the game, outstanding after the game as well. And yeah, it just felt like a home game, like they were amazing. And yeah, Messi scored his 789th goal in 1,000 games. And yeah, his goal involvements are over 1,100 in that time, which is just remarkable numbers. But even just watching him, like taking on, three, getting out of tight spaces, taking on three or four players, went on an amazing run as well, but then just got blocked off in the end. And then Australia managed to get back into the game as well. 
and then yeah they had a really big chance right at the end with uh, Lissandro Martinez made a exceptional block I don't know how he's not starting for Argentina because he's just an amazing defender and he's so passionate and just loves to defend so yeah he made a, an amazing block and also right at the death there was a chance for Australia to make it 2-2 but the player I think he's coming up I think he's joining Newcastle in January he he turned and swiveled but Emmy Martinez just came and closed him down really quickly and made a crucial save and Argentina went through so yeah, I thought they played really well in the second half, Argentina at times, like the ball retention from Messi and De Paul were just unbelievable. And yeah, they play the Netherlands. I think it's going to be a 50-50 game, that one. It's like, yeah, and it's good to have two big nations going head to head as well. And then also today we have France versus Poland. I think if Poland play anything like they did against Argentina, in the final group game then France will just run riot but I feel like Poland will have to give it a bit more but, and I think they will do but ultimately France will have too much because they've got the quality of Giroud, Mbappe, Riesman and yeah I think France will go through but if Poland can cause an upset then it opens up the draw between England and Senegal so yes Senegal I, I, thought I feel like they've been playing quite well in the tournament they've grown into it England have got seven points in from the nine group games from the three games sorry so they've got seven points from a possible nine and yeah they take on Senegal and yeah they, I'm hearing talks of there being a decision for Southgate to make between Rashford and Full Foden like both of them started in the last game and yeah there's been reports that Saka's definitely going to start so it's going to be interesting to see who's going to start this game because before the last game against Wales, there was a clamour for Phil Foden to start and then he managed to get a start and then he scored a goal, but Rashford also scored two brilliant goals and there's been a lot of praise for him since he's scored them two goals. So it would be interesting to see which one he picks in that in the position on the wing. So, yeah, I feel like my favourite formation is 4-2-3-1, but I feel like England might go 4-3-3 three, three. and and the reason why I say that is because Harry Kane sort of drops into the number 10 position so when he does that a lot it sort of like nullifies the actual number 10 so Mason Mount who who was in that number 10 position for the first two games like so it was ineffective because Harry Kane kept coming deep and then like Mason Mount couldn't really get into the game so I feel like he might go 4-3-3 three, three, and I feel like because it's the last 16 game he'll probably start with Bellingham Henderson and Rice in midfield and then he'll probably go up front with Kane, Saka and then Rashford or Foden and then the back four will pick itself so it'll be Walker, Jones, Maguire and Shaw and I'll obviously pick the goal but yeah England have a good chance to get, make it through to the last eight and it should be a good game I'm looking forward to that so that one's at seven o'clock so yeah so France versus Poland that uh, three o'clock and then England Senegal at seven o'clock so it should be a good game it's knockout football you've got to give it your all and it's going to be quite tense I reckon so I've just got to finish off with come on England